Hello, Mathletes! Once again, I'm your Math Mentor, Sir Luther, and welcome to another tutorial video. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the two types of propositions, namely the simple propositions and compound propositions, and after which, we're going to discuss about logical connectives. But, before anything else, if you haven't watched our first video about proposition, please do watch our previous video on how to determine whether the given statement defines a proposition or not. It will, ha it will help you understand better the content of our discussion in this video. And in the same video, I also discussed on how to tell whether the proposition is a true proposition or a false proposition. So, without any further ado, let's start with our discussion. Starting off with simple propositions. Simple proposition is a proposition that can't be broken down any further into other component propositions. And also, it is a proposition that conveys only one thought with no connecting words. So, as defined, mathletes, this type of proposition can't be expressed further into much simpler component or proposition since it is already simple in its truest sense. And recall that in our previous video, we have mentioned some few examples of simple propositions. And these are Proposition P, Mindanao is an island in the Philippines. And also, we have Proposition R, my seatmate will get a perfect score in the logic exam. And we have Proposition T, 3 plus 2 equals 5. And if we're going to translate this into verbal phrase or English phrase, we have the sum of 3 and 2 is 5. In these examples, observe that all the statements convey only one thought. Let's take for instance the preposition P. Mindanao is an island in the Philippines. The statement has a subject, Mindanao, with a predicate, an island in the Philippines. Take note that the whole statement conveys one thought about the subject, that is, uh, that it is rather, an island in the Philippines. And suppose we're going to break down the statement into simpler ones like Mindanao. And the other is an island in the Philippines. Notice now that the two statements have no complete thought or idea. Simply because the statement has only one independent clause. Thus, this makes simple proposition impossible to break down into much simpler or other propositions. So, same case with propositions R and T. So, I think I did not discuss these two examples further. Now, let's move on to our second type of proposition, which is compound proposition. So, when we say compound propositions, it is a proposition formed from simpler proposition using logical connectors. Unlike simple propositions earlier, compound propositions are propositions that can be broken down further into simple propositions using logical connectives. And I will show later some of the frequent used or the most commonly used uh, logical connectives in combining simple propositions to form 
a compound propositions. And when we say compound propositions, it contains two or more simple propositions that are put together using connective words. Okay? Let's see. So, to explain compound proposition better, let's take proposition P sub 2 as an example. Either logic is fun and interesting, or it is boring. In this example, the statement presents three independent ideas or thoughts. The first one is, logic is fun. The second one, logic is interesting. And the third one, logic is boring. As you can see, we can rewrite the proposition into three simpler propositions or what we call component statements by using logical connectors or connectives to combine the three component statements which will be uh, which we will be discussing in detail shortly after this to form a compound proposition and the usual connective words we use to combine component statements to form a compound proposition are words and or if then and if and only if and lastly we have the word not i will explain each connective further later but for now let's focus on identifying and rewriting the simple components in the following propositions we will discuss separately on how to de determine the truth value of the following statements after we discuss the different types of logical connectives because the truth value of the proposition changes depending on the logical connectors used as connectives. Okay? So we have these examples. So we have proposition P, R, U, S, and T. In our first example, observe that there are two component statement, uh, statements here, connected by the word N. Okay? So we have here the connective word N. Hence, our first simple proposition A would be the year 2016 is a leap year. And our second proposition B would be the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0 has no solution. Can you follow my athletes? Well, if you have any question or clarification, uh, just comment it below and I'll try to explain further in our next video. Next, we have if 2x plus 5 equals 7, then x equals 1. And, of course, just like what we did in our previous example, given a mathematical statement like this one, it would be a lot better if we're going to translate it into verbal phrase. So, if we're going to translate this into verbal phrase or English phrase, we have 5 more than twice x, a number x, is 7. Then, x equals 1. So observe that in this statement, we use the connector if, then, okay? So the connector we used, or the connective word we used is the word if and then. 
So the first simple proposition or component statement that we can derive out of the given proposition would be proposition C, 5 more than twice a number x. And our second proposition, x is 1. Okay, that's it. Moving on to our third example. You went to the rock concert and your ears hurt. So again, in this statement, we use the connective word and. So, our first proposition, proposition E, is you went to the rock concert. And the second proposition would be proposition F, your ears hurt. Okay, then next example. Dr. Mark said I could come to his office on Friday and Saturday or Monday next week. So notice that in this example, it is already a combination of two connective words. The, the word, the word and, and the word or. Okay? So, from this statement, we could have three simple propositions. And the first one is proposition G. Dr. Mark said I, I could come to his office on Friday. And our second proposition, we have proposition H. Dr. Mark said I could come to his office on Saturday. And for our third proposition, proposition, proposition I, we have Dr. Mark said I could come to his office on Monday next week. Okay, so that's it. And we have another example. Points are collinear if and only if they lie on the same line. So in this statement, the connective word or words we used is the words if and only if. So it separates actually the, the first simple proposition to the second uh, simple proposition. So therefore, uh, we have two simple propositions that we can derive out of this given proposition. And that is pro proposition G points are collinear and our second proposition proposition H they lie on the same line. Okay? So that's it for simple and compound propositions. So, I'm hoping that you already learned on how to identify the different simple propositions from the given statements or proposition. So, as an exercise, let's try to answer this one before we proceed to our next topic, uh, which is logical or about logical connectives uh, we have proposition p sub 1 it is not the case that square root of 2 is a rational number and we have proposition 2 either logic is fun and interesting or it is boring uh, we already answered the second example actually so let's proceed to P sub 3, if you are a grade 11 student, then you are a Filipino. And then we have P sub 3, if a triangle has a right angle, 
then the triangle is a right triangle and we already discussed uh, proposition p sub 4 so we will only answer propositions p sub 1 p sub 3 and we have p sub 4 uh, supposedly that is p sub 4 okay so for our first proposition p sub 1 okay i'll give you few seconds or few minutes to give your answers first then let's try to answer these examples all right time is up so for our first proposition okay we have we name this one as prop proposition r square root of 2 is a rational number okay so going back the statement the original statement actually is it is not the case that square root of 2 is a rational number so the connective word used here is the word not so meaning we can have the other proposition by negating the statement okay we negate the statement since it was stated it is not therefore we will assume that square root of 2 is a rational number okay so that's it and the second one we already answered this one okay so we have proposition B you are grade 11 and therefore the next simple proposition is proposition e you are a filipino and we have if you study hard and we have you get good grades okay and we have the first proposition a triangle has a right angle and the second proposition we have the triangle is called a right triangle okay so that's it for the simple and compound propositions so let's move on to our next topic about logical connectives so we have logic and English language it's quite awkward here that our topic actually is, is our subject rather is mathematics but we are discussing a little bit of English right well that's very essential in understanding logic okay so logic and English language so in reading writing and speaking we use the connective words and or if then to connect thoughts okay so we use these connectives actually to connect thoughts and in logic these are called connectives okay we call them connectives when we say connectives these are words used to join two or more logical statements that we have discussed earlier the the different simple propositions that we derive from the given proposition or statement or what we call component statements and the most common and of, often used connectives are, as I've, said, I, as I've said earlier, we have and, or, if, then, and if and only if, and I forgot to include the word not. Okay, so please take note. So we have and, or, if, then, and if and only if, and the word not. Okay, so often we use letters to designate statements instead of rewriting over and over again okay so we use letters actually to denote propositions uh, if you have remembered if you remembered earlier we have propositions a b and c okay to denote the simple propositions that we derive from the given statements and typically but of course not limited to we use the letters P, Q, R, and S to represent simple statements. But actually, yes, 
take nota, not limited to. So that means we can use any letters from the alphabet. It could be A, B, C, and so on and so forth. But we usually use P, Q, R, and S. Maybe uh, it started from the letter P because we are dealing with proposition. Usu usually in algebra, we represent the, the variable using the first letter of the word. Okay, so in this case, we have P for propositions and then Q, R, S, T, and so on and so forth. Okay, so earlier I've already presented this one, logical connectives, okay? So, and, or, if, then, if, and only if, and not. So, let's discuss in detail what do we mean, or I mean, we're going to discuss each connective word in detail and the first one is the the word end or the connective word end okay so let's present it first that's it so the word end actually is called conjunction okay and with a symbol look like an inverted letter V. So this inverted inverted letter 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 V read as N. And sometimes the word but, however, and also means the same. Okay? So in a statement or proposition, if you can see these words but, however, and also, that means uh, the same with the connective word end. And it will be represented by the inverted letter B. Okay. So, so, for example, we have two propositions here. Let proposition P, you will serve five months in prison. And we have proposition Q, you will pay a $30,000 fine. So, writing this in symbols, we have, you will serve five months in prison. Okay. So, that's the, the first statement, P. The connective word and represented by the inverted letter V and the second statement you will pay a $30,000 fine Q okay so this proposition can be represented or expressed in symbols as P and Q okay that's it. We're going to discuss this further in our next video, okay? In detail, the different compound statements. But for now, so let us uh, present uh, some of the concepts little by little, okay? Then, we have the connective word OR. So, if the word and is called the conjunction, we have the word or, or we call this one a disjunction, okay? And represented by the symbol that looks like a letter V, okay? And it is read as or. So, we have to take note that the word or is inclusive unless otherwise stated, okay? So what do we mean by inclusive unless otherwise stated? Okay, uh, let's have this one. Let's see. So we have here the example. Proposition P. Lian will go to the beach. Then, pro proposition Q. Lian will go to the Padres game. So in this example, Lian, the statement Lian will go to the beach is represented by the letter P and the connective word OR is represented by the symbol that looks like letter V okay here and the next statement Lian will go to the Padres game is represented by letter Q 
So the whole symbols here will be read as P or Q. Okay. So when we say inclusive, uh, when we use the, conjunct this, the, 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 the disjunction, rather, when we use the disjunction or, that means it is possible that Leanne will go to the beach or she has another choice to go to the Padres game. When we say inclusive, it is possible that he will go to both places. That means Leanne will go to the beach at the same time he will go to the Padres game. Okay, so that's it. Oh, okay, so I've already explained it earlier. Okay, so Lian will go to the beach or Lian will go to the Padres game may mean Lian will go to the beach or Lian will go to the Padres game or Lian will go to both places, the beach and the Padres game. That's it. And the second one is the not statement. Okay, so the not statement. Uh, wait, the not statement. So, <clears throat> by convention, we have PQR and, uh, PQR and S represent statements that are not negated. Okay? So, negated statements use the symbol, uh, we, call the, we, we call this symbol in mathematics as the similarity, symbol for similarity or approximately. So, to neg uh, we use this symbol, similarity symbol, to negate the statement. And it is read as not. Okay? So, we read this one uh, as not. So, we have here an example. If two lines intersect, then they lie in only one plane. So, from this statement, uh, we have two simple propositions. So, proposition P, two lines intersect. And pro proposition Q, they lie in only one plane. So if we're going to use the word, the connective word not, that means we are negating the statement from its original um, form or meaning. So two lines intersect. If we're going to negate that one, if two lines do not intersect. So the statement or the proposition P, the two lines intersect. So in symbols, if we're going to negate the statement, we have the similarity symbol. Okay. We have the similarity symbol followed by the proposition P. Okay. So in words, we have the not. So if two lines do not intersect, then they do not lie in only one plane. So in symbols, we have not P, then, then, not Q. Okay? So, not P, then, not Q. Or sometimes, we read this one as, not P implies not Q. Okay? So, this symbol here will be, or can be read as, implies not Q. Okay, that's it. And... The next one, we have the connective words, if and only if statements. Okay, so if and only if statements actually are biconditional statements. Okay, so if the statement use the word if and only if, so we call that one a biconditional statement, which we are, uh, which we are going to discuss uh, in our next video, okay? As I've said, we're going to discuss the concepts little by little. So, by conditional statement, statements symbolized by uh, by if and only if, okay? And we have the example, proposition P, the web browser is working. And Proposition Q, the computer is connected to the internet. So if we're going to express this by using the connective, connective rather, words, if and only if, then we have the web browser is working if and only if 
the computer is connected to the internet okay so that's it okay and it shows last so actually the symbol we used for if and only if is this one okay that one the two headed arrows okay heading to the left and heading to the right at the same time a biconditional statement okay so the web browser is working is our proposition p and our proposition q the computer is connected to the internet okay and if we're going to connect the two uh, statements by using the biconditional statement if and only if then we have p i'm sorry we have p if and only if q okay that's it okay so the computer is connected to the internet if and only if the web browser is working okay so if we're going to use the negation earlier the not statement so it is false that the web browser is working so we negate the statement that the web browser is working here so therefore it is false that the web browser is working if and only if the computer is not connected to the internet okay so in symbols we have not p if and only if not q okay you will understand this better if we're going to focus more focus our discussion on each type of compound statements but for now uh, i will only give the general <clears throat> overview of what we are discussing about propositions okay so again uh, if you have noticed earlier we represented now um, the statements in terms of letters okay uh, because to determine the truth values of propositions, we only need to write letters in the truth table, okay? We need not to write everything, most especially for lengthy, lengthy uh, statements or sentences, okay? That is for our conven uh, convenience. So if the proposition is compound, then it must be one of the following. So as I've said earlier, we have the conjunction. So the simple propositions connected using the word n. So for example, the year 2016 is a leap year and the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0 has no solution. Okay, so the two propositions are connected by the word n. So we call this one a conjunction statement. And we also have the the disjunction so we call statements a disjunction if two simple propositions are connected using the word or okay so the word or in the sentence i will pass math exam or i will be promoted is an example of a disjunction <clears throat> okay next we have the conditional statement so we will discuss conditional statement a little bit um, more than other uh, logical statements okay because we have the different variations and implications of this one so conditional statements are two simple propositions connected by the words if then okay so for conditional statement uh, for example we have if a triangle has a right angle then the triangle is a right triangle so the statement between the if and then 
Okay? So the, state, the statement between if and then here is what we call the antecedent. Okay? That is what we call the antecedent in a, in a conditional statement. And the sentence that follows then, this one, the triangle is a right triangle, is what we call the consequent. Okay? Again, in the statement, if a triangle has a right angle, then the triangle is a right triangle. So the statement between the if and then is called the antecedent. Okay? The antecedent of the conditional. And the sentence that follows the word then is what we call the consequent. Okay? That is why it is called conditional because we are stating a condition starting with the word if and then the consequence by the word then. Okay? Next. Okay, the biconditional statement. A conjunction of two conditional statements, okay, so biconditional statements using uh, two conditional statements actually. So a conjunction of two conditional statements where the antecedent and consequent of the first statement have been switched in the second statement, okay? So let me show you an example here for... Um, a glimpse of what we are going to discuss about biconditional statements. Uh, okay. This one. So the sentence, if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angle opposite them are congruent. And if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. So this statement actually is an example of a biconditional statement, okay? It's quite lengthy. So that is why uh, it is more convenient to use um, letters to represent the different propositions or component statements rather than the lengthy sentences or statements, okay? So it will be quite easy for us to determine the, uh, the statement's truth value, okay? So, if we're going to connect actually the statements, okay, uh, the sentence above, above uh, this, above this one, okay, the sentence above is usually stated as two sides of a triangle are congruent if and only if two angles opposite them are congruent. Okay, that's it. So, we shorten a little bit the two statements above, uh, the statements above, rather, for a biconditional statement. And the abbreviation for if and only if is simply uh, the letters IFF, okay? That's it. Next. The negation statement. So, I've discussed it earlier, the negation statement. So, when we say negation statement, the negation of a given statement is a statement that is false whenever the given statement is true. So, if the statement actually has a truth value of true, then if we're going to negate that one, it will have a false value, okay? And if the statement has a false value, if we're going to, to negate the statement, it will have a true value. Okay? That's it. So, for example, Herbert is good. If we're going to negate the statement, so that simply means Herbert is not good. Okay? Simple as that. Or, it can be stated as it is not the case that Herbert is good. So the meaning is still the same. Herbert is not good or it is not the case that Herbert is good. So we can use uh, the opening sentence here. It is not the case. Okay. Uh, 
we only need to remember that negation can be obtained by inserting the word not in the given statement or by prefixing it with a phrase such as it is not the case that okay uh, for instance the state the, the original statement is it is it is the case that so if we're going to negate that one uh, we are going to have it is not the case okay so that's it okay and to generalize everything we discussed so we have uh, this table actually so symbols are used to simplify work in logic as I've said earlier uh, we cannot actually um, answer logic statements by writing the lengthy statements so we're going to we are going to simplify our work by using symbols so as mentioned earlier the frequently used letters in algebra the letters P Q R and S are used to represent propositions in logic so that is the beauty of mathematics so we can actually shorten lengthy statements or um, mathematical statements most especially in logic so the table shows the several uh, the different symbols for connectives together with the respective types of compound proposition so if we have the connective end okay that is the symbol the inverted b type of statement that is conjunction and we have the connective or the symbol letter b the statement type of statement is disjunction and the connective not in symbol we have the symbol for similarity or approximation and the type of statement is the negation a negation statement and if the connective uh, words is if then so in symbol we have a an arrow okay going to the right so type of statement is what we call conditional statements okay and this arrow going to the right can be read as implies okay as i've said earlier p implies q or if p then q and for connected if and only if or biconditional statements and it uses actually two headed arrows going to the left and going to the right all right so that's all for now in our next video we're going to discuss each type of compound proposition and how to determine their truth values please don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell like comment and share